This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. I don't really talk about gear a lot on this channel, but I've recently made a really big gear switch, which I think is worth sharing with you because I certainly learned a lot in the process. About a year ago, I put out a video talking about the fact that I'd switched from the X100 to the X-T20 for street photography. And a lot of you were very, very annoyed with me because you said you'd gone out and bought an X100 because I used one, not that I told anyone to do that. Fair warning, if that video annoyed you, this one is gonna make you apocalyptic. Let me give you a very quick overview of my gear history to explain why I've done what I've done recently. I started back in the day with a little Canon 550D. I had a 350D before that second hand, but I went out and the first new camera I bought to use more professionally was a 550D, which is a little APS-C crop sensor. I think in the States it was called the T2i. And at the time they didn't have the kit lens for it in the store, but they did have a secondhand 50mm 1.4, which the guy behind the counter says, you obviously don't understand much about photography, take this lens, trust me, it's good. So I took it off him and that gave me about an 85mm at 1.4. And so I straight away got into portraits and started to shoot for food photography and little things like that. And a friend of mine was starting a catering business and she said to me, I saw some stuff you were shooting, it looks pretty good, would you come and shoot some food for my catering business? Which I did and she loved the images and that's what went up on her website and that eventually lent to my first full-time job with a company in South Africa. The job for that company was to shoot food and product photography and I stuck with my 550D. This was my first professional job. I bought a second 550D eventually. I got a little uh, 35mm plastic prime and a 24mm plastic prime which basically gave me my 35, 50 and 85 and I bought a 70 to 200 F4, the non-IS one, the cheap one because it was great for food as well and portraits. I eventually got some money together to start upgrading, so I upgraded to full frame and I went with the Canon 5D Mark IIs. I started upgrading each of my primes to better quality prime lenses, and then eventually got myself a 24 to 105, which is actually the kit lens for the 5D, just because it's a great versatile lens for shooting products in a studio. The 550Ds and the 5D Mark IIs were exciting cameras back in the day because they gave us video in these boxes for the first time, and because of our ability to shallow the depth of field, because of the great lenses we could stick on the front, it meant we could shoot much more cinematic footage, but out of one box, the same box that we were taking stills with. The only issue with them is there was no usable autofocus, so you had to really slow down, plan your shots, dial in your focus, and stuff couldn't move around too much. So eventually I also moved up and bought an 80D because it had dual pixel autofocus and it really kept up while you were shooting video. Then about three years ago, while I was in the middle of working for companies, shooting products in big studios all day, I found I was falling out of love with photography because it just became so technical, I'd forgotten how to be creative with it. And so I started shooting on my phone for street photography. And then the next camera that I bought was actually the Fuji X100 because it could go in my bag with me every day and I could just wander around and take photos while I was on the street. And it was brilliant for that. And then over time I realized it'd be nice in my little daily bag to also have a couple of little interchangeable lenses to shoot a portrait maybe and then switch back and shoot street while I was traveling around. And that's why I moved from the fixed lens X100 to the X-T20 with a few lenses for that. The problem with that is that I built up three totally separate kits for different purposes. For my studio stuff, I had two Canon 5D Mark II bodies. I had a 35mm 1.4 Sigma, the 50mm 1.4 Sigma, the Canon 85 1.4 for portrait work, and I had my 24 to 105 for the more versatile stuff. And that all went in this bag. And then for video work, I had the Canon 80D as my main body because of the reliable autofocus, and I used to use the 5D Mark II sometimes as second angles. And then with that, I got the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8, but that didn't really have image stabilization, so I couldn't handhold it, so I bought the Canon 17 to 55 2.8 with image stabilization, and then I also bought the 24mm 2.8 pancake lens so that I could mount it on the first generation Zhiyun crane and get some gimbal stuff. And all that stuff went in this bag here. Then for street photography, I bought the Fuji X-T20 as a smaller runaround camera. With that, I had the 23mm f2, the 35mm f1.4, and the 56mm f1.2 for portraits as I went around. And all that stuff went around with me daily in this bag here. Now I'm a hybrid shooter 
which means that I shoot as much stills as I do video for my clients. And with the amount of travel I had to do, it just became such a pain to have to take multiple bags everywhere that I went. And I started to wonder, is there a way to get a small enough kit that would fit in one bag that would fulfill all my needs across the board, but with a much smaller amount of gear? Before I get into exactly what I've done, let me just say a couple of words to the camera brands I've used so far. If anyone from Fuji ever watches this, you make great cameras. I can't recommend you highly enough to people who travel and do street photography and want to run around light and take great quality images. The thing I'm really grateful to Fuji for is the fact that the cameras themselves and holding them made me want to shoot more. In fact, I think I can credit Fuji and the feel of a Fuji in my hand and the convenience day to day as being the reason that I've actually got so into street photography in the last few years. I thought long and hard about trying to find a way to switch to Fuji totally, and unfortunately, even with the X-H1 coming out and having more video specs, it's still not quite there for my needs. But Fuji, you make great cameras and keep going, and maybe in the future, I'll be able to switch back. If anyone from Canon ever watches this, I have to say that I will always have a soft spot in my heart for you as a camera company. I started with you, I've built the majority of my career on the back of your technology, and I always recommend your cameras to people who want that full frame goodness and beautiful color signs. But I also have to say that over the last few years, I've been very disappointed. The reason I started with you guys is because as a hybrid shooter, you were the first camera seriously giving us one box, one camera body that produced beautiful stills and stunning video. And over the years, I feel like you've slowly started to hamstring those products, deliberately not keeping up with the video specs because you want us to both buy your DSLRs and buy your C100s and 200s and 300s and 500s. And most of us, one, don't have the money to do that. And two, we're trying to get our kit smaller and smaller, not bigger and bigger. You are still undisputably the biggest camera brand on the planet. But if you're looking at your market share and if it's slowly creeping down and other camera brands are creeping up, this is the reason why we're leaving is because we just don't have the resources. Little guys like myself don't have the extra money or space. We don't have crews and we don't have huge bank accounts to be able to buy everything you want us to buy to get the tech that other camera companies are giving us in one very small body. So when I was thinking about what would be the right tool for the job, here's the short list of specs that I had. One, I wanted full frame. I understand the arguments about it doesn't make a difference and just got APS-C or Micro Four Thirds. That's great for you. I don't want to get into it with you, but for me, certainly, as a portrait shooter, I want the bigger options for depth of field, which is why I want to go full frame. I wanted something with in-body stabilization so I could handhold for video. I wanted 120 frames a second. I'd only ever had 60 to get more uh, into slow motion video. I wanted very customizable picture profiles and I wanted reliable autofocus. And when you put all those things together, for me, there was only one option I could really afford and one camera brand that was giving me all those things at a price I could actually reach, and that was Sony. So here's what I've done. I've got two Sony A7 III bodies, which have all the specs that I've mentioned. I have a Tamron 28-75, 2.8, which is going to double as my versatile studio lens. It's a very sharp lens, but it's also, uh, with the firmware update, it's got great autofocus and can be a run and gun video lens because the camera has in-body stabilization. I've held on to my 18-35mm to Sigma as a second video lens as well for when I'm doing two angle interviews. My primes are now still my 35 Sigma with an adapter, my 50mm Sigma with an adapter, and then I bought the Sony 85 1.8, and then on top of that, I've also bought the Samyang 35 2.8, which is now my street photography lens, because when I put this little pancake lens on the Sony a7 III, it's still a really small profile, tiny lens I can take around with me every day. And all that now fits into one bag when I'm traveling. I did this big switch the other day, and I have to admit it was a very surreal experience. I went down to the store with, you know, three bags worth of stuff and all the cameras boxed up and handed everything over, and I knew that it would take them a couple of hours to process through, check all the gear worked, and give me prices for everything. So I went to a coffee shop to sit and wait. And while I was sitting there, it was very odd knowing that at that moment, I didn't really have any cameras. And I started to think about this next set of gear that I would get. And I thought about Sony as a brand, and I'm about to shoot myself in the face for any time Sony would want a partner, but this is how I felt. I wasn't excited about moving to Sony as a brand, but I was 100% at peace that it was the right decision. 
I haven't sat for years thinking, oh my gosh, I can't wait for one day when I own a Sony. It's not that at all. And I didn't feel emotional about the connection. I remember when I went and picked up a Fuji for the first time, even though it was a, an old secondhand Fuji for cheap, I felt excited about the camera because it had an, a, a mystique to it. It had a bit of a romance about it. Sony didn't have that for me at all. This was a totally unemotional, dispassionate decision as a professional. I knew that getting these cameras was the right tool for the jobs that I do, and that was it. And it got me thinking, what is it that keeps us from switching to gear that's the right choice for us? I think one reason is brand loyalty. Last week, a few of us did an exhibition in a gallery of our street photography work, and one of the gentlemen who came in and spoke to me told me the story of his father giving him his first camera. And the advice that he gave him was, take as many photographs as you can, because it will only make you better, but don't get romantic about the camera. It's just the tool in your hand. And he also said to him, don't get stuck with this camera and be so brand loyal you don't move on when it's time. A lot of us get emotionally attached to cameras. And I'll be honest with you, there was a moment where I was sitting in that coffee shop waiting for them to process my stuff, where I actually felt a bit sad about saying goodbye to these cameras, which I journey with for so long. But they are just cameras. And I had to remind myself that. So me telling you this isn't like I've got this worked out. I still have to do a bit of self-talk. It's just a box with a brand name on it. When I was doing research about the a7 III, I watched a lot of videos from people who had switched from Canon to Sony and what their experience was like. And one wedding photographer's comment really stuck out to me. And he said, I feel silly that I've stuck with this camera brand for so long. I knew a while ago that this was the move I needed to make, but it took me a while to build up the emotional courage to do what I needed to do to get the right tool in my hand to move forward. I think another reason we can get stuck and not pick the most practical tool for us is gear snobbishness. We seem to think that if we have a fancy or a trendy camera that other people know is a good camera or, or has a good reputation, they're going to think we're good photographers. But we forget that at some point they're going to see our images and they're going to make up their own minds anyway. I know a lot of rubbish photographers who use Leicas and I know some absolutely incredible photographers who only shoot on their phone. The brand won't make you a better photographer. It won't even fool other people into thinking you're a better photographer. Only your actual skills will do that. Another reason people get stuck on particular brands, I think, and I've been very guilty of saying this in the past, is that this camera gives me my look. Let's be honest, both Fuji and Canon in different ways have great reputations for good color science. But for all the arguments backwards and forwards online with people saying, I'll only ever use Canon because of the beautiful skin tones, or I'll only ever use Fuji because of the colors that come straight out of the camera are absolutely beautiful. I haven't totally understood what everyone's banging on about. For my mind, that argument only really makes sense if you don't edit your work, but the vast majority of us do. I really believe that if I'm a professional, you can put a Fuji in my hand or or a Canon or a Nikon or a Panasonic or a Pentax or a Leica or a Sony, doesn't matter what the brand is, that I can shoot, I can light, I can raw process and I can edit in Photoshop and put that image and fit it into my portfolio seamlessly because I have control over every stage and I'm not relying on any single camera body to give me the look that I want. I mean, if the camera brand is doing the heavy lifting for me on the color science side, what happens if that camera brand goes bust? They don't make those cameras anymore. Then what do I do? Do my images change overnight and I can never get back to the look I had? Or can I get myself to the place where my skill set is such and my level of control is such that it doesn't matter what camera brand I have to use tomorrow, I can be confident I can produce images that fit with the rest of the work that I've done. Learn to raw process and edit your own color space and then you will be free to choose any camera that suits your needs. So will the work that I do change because I've changed gear? Well, maybe. I mean, I already know the ways that the work that I do is gonna get easier because of the tech these cameras have and how it makes it the right tool to do what I do. And yes, there'll be things which I have to learn, things I have to get used to, definitely with Sony menu structures, which I will have to figure out, which will take me a while. But I'm not insecure in the slightest that all the work that I produce, I will be as proud of, I will have as much control of, and it will still 100% feel like my work. If there are changes which happen to my work, which I didn't intend, it just means I wasn't a good enough photographer, that I was relying on the gear instead of my own photography brain, and I still have work to do to get more control over the whole process. But the point is, traveling will be easier, shooting will be easier, and with the things these cameras can do, they are the right tool for me today, and that's all that counts. The rest, I will make work. 
I've said it before, I will say it again, it is not the camera in your hand that makes you a great photographer, it is your photographer's brain, no matter what camera you have in your hand. And if you get yourself to that stage, understanding that, then you are free to buy whatever camera you can afford, which is the right tool for the job at hand. So I'm not recommending Canon to you, I'm not recommending Fuji to you, I'm not recommending Sony to you, I'm not recommending any camera to you. I'm saying that if you get yourself to the place where you have control over your process, you then look at your bank account and reasonably speaking say, what camera can I afford to buy without putting myself into huge debt that I can't afford? Get that camera, apply your brain to the tool that is the correct tool you have in your hand and then get out there and shoot like crazy to get better. Remember that every camera is just a light proof box that captures images on a sensor or on a piece of celluloid. You are the photographer. Before you go, I wanted to let you know about an event that's coming up at the beginning of October called Photo City Hull. I will be there for three days from the 5th to the 7th of October. I'll be giving the keynote speech as well as hanging out for the whole three days and I'll be doing street photography walks. You'll be able to book portfolio reviews with me if you want to talk through your images. I'll also be giving a talk to photographers about how and why you should be getting into YouTube at this stage as well as just hanging out in general. Often when I go off to these expos I find them to be very big and busy and you can't really get in touch with people. This is going to be a much more intimate little festival where people come together and photographers hang out all day, have long in-depth chats about photography in pubs and going to talks and just really enjoying each other's company. So I would love to see as many of you there as possible. I will put a link down below for you to buy tickets to my talk and then it's just a case of getting yourself there. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. They really do help to keep this channel going. So if you need a new website or a domain, do me a favor, go check them out. I've used them myself for about six years now, long before they were ever a sponsor I was recommending them. When I built my website, I wanted something clean. I wanted my images to be front and center and the design to be very minimalist, but very, very well designed and put together. And they meet all those criteria and they're very, very easy to use. I built mine in a matter of hours, loading up my own text. I built my own blog. I put my own images into galleries, put my videos up and everything was there in place. It made my work sing and it was super easy for me to build and for me to manage into the future. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase.